Tight Riders. Hi guys, how you doing? My name's Dan from Hold Tight Riders, and I'm going to try something new. So obviously, uh, up until now, this channel has been mainly short three-minute videos from our travels around the world, looking at roller coasters. And, uh, what this is going to be is a very long series. Well, potentially very long series. We're going to build the Fala Power Tower. Um, now, if you haven't heard of Fala, they make fairground models basically in kit form. It's basically like the airfix kits you get to make aeroplanes and stuff, stuff like that, except this is for rides. Um, the power tower is kind of known to be one of the harder ones. However, I have already built one, which you might just about be able to see here. Um, and that was the first one I'd ever made, and it does work. So this one here is for my dad. Um, he's going to put it on his model railway, so it's double O gauge, which is the same as many model railways, so it's perfect for it really. Um, and I thought with this one, I'm just going to set the cameras rolling. So I have got two cameras here, um, hopefully I'll be able to sync them up, but I've never really done anything like this before, so let me know how it goes. Um, yeah, it'll be in a few parts, probably try and upload one a week it does take quite a long time having done the one before so first things first let's open the box see what we got Ooh. bear with me so we have a quick look inside the box to try and position it for this camera here as you can see everything comes flat packed you get inside the kit you get everything you need to make it work so it does come with a motor comes with uh, i think this here is actually a sound box which um judging by the one i've already made we won't be using because it sounds awful um everything is flat packed into sheets on um is it sprues i believe they call them so it is a little bit of a fiddly task as i'm sure you are starting to realize now logically what we'll do now is check to see that we've got all the parts however i don't want to do that because that's boring so i'm just going to go straight into it um you do also get your control box now the one i've got here and um, i'll show it to you on this camera here this is what you plug everything into and it will run a ride sequence for you presuming that you've made the tower correctly um this one don't be like if you buy the kit and it doesn't look like this don't be alarmed because the first one that i've already built the control box is a lot bigger and it has different plugs this one's a lot smaller i'm not sure whether it's designed with the thought of actually mounting it under the platform in mind because it's a bit of a mess with the current one so what we're going to do is pop this back in the box because there's, there's loads of bits and bobs and i'll go to the instruction manual see what we need to do first once we get going, obviously I'll speed up some of these sequences so you don't have to watch every single step. But when I built my first one, I found it was um, quite difficult in certain stages of the instruction manual to know what was going on. And I, was, I always asked one of my other friends who's, um, who's built one in the past um, for advice, which was really useful. So I'm thinking with this, if there, are, so if there is one of you out there who wants to build one, you can just refer back to my, my video here. So we've got one instruction manual for the what looks to be wiring up the control box presumably because this control box is a newer one um, than what came in the inst original instruction manual and then the main instruction manual is here so it's a good size good enough to read obviously it's uh, it's not in color which um, just makes things even more difficult. Just have a quick fl th flick through it. So if you're just flicking through this, it, it looks really simple. You're like, oh yeah, just a few pages. But um, you do need to have quite a steady hand and a lot of patience. I'm off work for a few weeks, so I thought this was the perfect time to do it. Um, so yeah, right through to the end product. Now, now before we get started, here are some things that you need. So the kit does actually come pre-coloured, 
so you don't need to paint it uh, you can do if you want but I won't be I'm literally just going to build it out of the box because um, I'm not quite as patient as I'd need to be to, to paint it all so things that you will need um, some tweezers are very very handy because it is a very very small model um, in terms of scale uh, well the best way to show you is to actually show you the one I've made so in photos it does look kind of bigger than you'd expect but so as you can see here here's the one I've made before and as I bring my thumb in you'll see it's absolutely tiny um, every single restraint is glued on itself and every single part as, as you'll find out in this video so you do need a little bit of a steady hand and that is where these tweezers come in you can get like proper modeling ones but uh, my girlfriend has millions of spare pair of spare pairs of these so I'm just using them it worked fine for me last time some modeling glue um, you can I've got some humbral poly cement here I've also got some uh, revel Ooh, there we go it's the same stuff it smells really nice it just like uh, basically welds the plastic together so you need some of that you'll also for a couple of steps need some super glue so just get some from Poundland um, unless you are a super glue snob which I am not um, sharp knife for cutting the parts off some cutters also for helping you get the parts um, and I've got some pliers as well which is useful for holding stuff in place so let me just get to grips with where we're going to start with this so stage one we need to find the bits in the box now some of the bits are bigger than others and they do provide you with the platform all as one piece so this is what the platform looks like um, which is very handy and we will also need uh, 10 1 from the box which I think is a yellow piece so it would help if these instructions were in color but they're not now where's the piece I'm looking for now if you do have missing pieces it'll be just be really annoying um, they do tend to give you some spares of some of them in the box and the one I made before I had loads of bits left over at the end um, I'm not sure whether they were supposed to be in the box or not but there we go if you do snap anything at this stage as well it's not the end of the world you can just glue it back together um, depending on what it is so just pop this box over here again apologies about the sniffles um, I have got man flu of course now I'm just trying to gauge which camera is going to be best for this now what I'm going to probably do is use this Go right, yeah. So we've got a GoPro on this side, um, Hero Three Plus for anyone who's interested. Just so it's an old one, but it does the job. Uh, that's going to be the the main overview shot, so you can see what's going on. And then hopefully I'm going to use this second camera over here to kind of do the close up. So I'm just going to bring that in a little bit. Now, so stage one. Here's what it looks like in the instructions. So we've got the base and part ten one. Now what we've got to do is actually get rid of this. So we just use the side cutters, that's the way I like to do it. Get in there, give it a snip. Now, the first time I did this with my other one, it wasn't really clear that you had to cut this out because the instruction literally just shows the box. Um, and you will get that with quite a few of the instructions in this kit and with all the Fala stuff. Um, they kind of assume that you've got some common sense about you, which isn't always the case. So I just use the side cutters to get it off and then use a sharp knife. This one isn't very sharp, so I'm going to have to snap it off just to clean up any edges. Um, yeah, we'll stick with that for now. So that's the first part ready. Uh, not sure about this lighting, might need a bit more. Who knows? Anyway. Um, I've never really done anything like this on this channel before, so I'd just like to say hello to everybody who subscribes and anyone who watches us, and thank you very much. This has been a 
well, 2016 has been quite an eventful year for Hold Tight Riders. We've reached over 4,000 subscribers, which I know isn't many in the grand scheme of life, but it's, it's good for us. Very happy. Um, and almost at two and a half million views now. So thank you. Thank you very much to everybody. Now, so this is the second part that I needed. Um, again, use the side cutters to get it out. And then if you need to clean it up at all, I'm just gonna move the camera a bit. If you need to clean it up at all, you just, just use a knife to gently. Now you can use a file or um, a file or some sandpaper for this, which is what I started doing with my original one. But it didn't, I don't know, I think you need to be really patient to get a good finish when you're sanding, because you start sanding the color off. <laughs> Uh, well, not the colour off, but it, the, the finish doesn't look as good, and I got annoyed with it. So I find with the knife, it tends to be good enough, um, unless you're looking really, really closely, you won't really notice. So what we've got to do with this one, turn it upside down. So you've got to turn the base upside down, which I have, and basically insert this piece there there are four little pegs which you can insert it on it will only go one way because the other way doesn't fit so what i tend to do with these is a dry run first so that that slots on perfectly you can see these little pins and test that's all all right yeah that's all good and then once you've done the dry run use a bit of the old poly cement so what we're going to do is we're going to use the Revel because I think this one, I don't know, might be blocked. I'm not just sniffing glue, I promise you. Uh, so this stuff, you, you don't need anywhere near as much as you think you might. Have I still got any good? Yeah, it's still running. You don't need as much as you think you would. So you give it a squeeze. Now this may be blocked. Now it is blocked. I've got a trick, uh, which I was shown by my dad. So bear with me. Um, I need to find a match or something. So these glues do tend to dry up. And here's a little trick that my dad taught me the other day. So you need a match or some form of fire. It's always good to have a bit of fire around the house. Um, basically just heat it up. Ooh, it's on fire. Probably not meant to do that. This might not work as planned. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Does it work? It's like a little smoke machine coming out the end of here now. Yep, it worked. So there we go. You need to unblock a glue, just heat it up with some fire. So what you do is you pop a dab of this stuff on. It is basically like cement. It kind of welds. Is that showing up yet? Yeah kind of welds the parts together so you do get a little bit of positioning time not not a lot I'm just gonna put a bit of glue in you, this probably isn't even needed to be honest but it's good anyway so there we go pop that on get this back on push it in boom there we go and we saw it so that's in now this stuff does dry quite quickly and even though I did just say you don't need to use much I am going to put a dab more on just because this part is what holds the tower up eventually so I do want it to be nice and secure give the glue a scientific dab once you're done and that tends to help stop it from clogging up so quickly so there we go there's that there's there's stage one how are we doing so we're 20 minutes in and we've glued two pieces together. Um, I will probably try and speed this up a little bit. So, moving on now to stage two. So we've got some decorations in the box that we need to find. There we go. Thank you. 
basically, this is the bit I don't really like about this model, is you put a sticker all the way around the bottom to make a kind of, uh, rather than it being painted, which I don't think looks that good to be honest, but when the whole model's made you don't really concentrate on it, so it's not too bad. Um, before I put that on though, we need to cut out. Now, this is another stage in the instructions that's a bit um, unclear. So basically inside, I could do with another light here, can I? Inside the base, there's four little cutouts, which they haven't actually cut out. Presumably the mold they've got uh, wouldn't be very strong if they molded it like that. So what you gotta do is actually cut that out yourself. Use a knife. No, you could spend literally hours and hours doing this, making it absolutely perfect, bloody bloody blah, blah, blah. But Now I do have another tool that I haven't previously mentioned. It's a little file. These are the holes that the outriggers will stick out of. So they do need to be big enough. Otherwise the outrigger doesn't actually fit. So there's four of them, there's one, as you can see, cut out, just going to do the rest, I'll probably speed it up for you now, so I'll catch you in a minute. You do end up with a lot of spare plastic when you're doing this. I say spare, like rubbish plastic that you cut off. What I tend to do is keep any kind of spare bits just in case like you snap anything later or you need a spare bit. You can normally kind of forge one out of the, the leftovers that you get. So there we go. That's the four bits cut out, simples. So now we come back to these stickers. So the instructions tell you what number they are. So these are decos or decos. I assume that's German or Dutch for decal of some sort or decoration. So we're looking for deco four first, which there's two of here. So number four just goes on the sides, I think. So I'm just gonna do that now. Peel it off. Now this may go wrong and I may cry a bit. Is this too big? See now this is bigger than I think it should be. But what can you do, eh? This is that whole steady hand thing that you need. I'll try and get it so you can actually see what I'm doing. But that may mean that I do it wrong. Ooh. Hand is not feeling very steady right now. No. So I'm going to do it like this. Because. You don't need to see this anyway. Pop that on. Right. So. Trying to keep it level is really difficult. Now, sorry about that. I seem to have an issue with the camera there. So here's the first one on. I suppose it doesn't look too bad from a distance. So basically you've got to go around the whole thing with them. So just going to do the rest of those now and I'll let you sit back and enjoy.
as well. Hold it around. So as you can see I've put the stickers on all the way around, to be honest it doesn't look as bad as, uh, as I remember it looking when I did the other one. Um, they are like super sticky so if you get it wrong be very careful when you pull it off. So again we've got to cut out the holes in the sticker now so that's quite easy just use the knife um, to trace back the old, the old roots and see if I can get a bit more light down there, is that better? Hmm, I'll try that. Let's see. Now I'm right handed and I've just been thinking I've probably put the uh, camera on the wrong side because it just means you can't see what's going on because my hand keeps getting in the way. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Sticky stuff really does get all over your hands, which is really annoying. But as you can tell, from the cheer in my voice, I'm still optimistic about this whole thing. I'm sure if you skip towards the end of this video, I'll be in a far more, oh dear, agitated mood. Well, I've made a mess of this, but what we're going to do is rely on the fact that people have come to look at a model drop tower and not a sticker, so hopefully we'll be alright. Now the phone seems to be recording again now. If it does stop recording, just shout, okay? Leave a comment below, say that the phone stopped recording. Apologies about the sniffle once again. So there we go, that's the stickers done. It must be said that this is the most boring bit of the entire build. Um, if you can stick through the early base work, which we're doing now, we've just got to put the outriggers in. It gets a lot more interesting with the gondola um, and a lot more fiddly. It kind of throws you in at the deep end and makes you decide whether or not this is the project for you. And when I did the one before, I was like, oh no, I better give up. So what we need now for step D is sprue number 11. So if you have a look on it, each one is numbered, so you can see there, this is 11, and then each part is the slash, so it says 11, it's, uh, sprue number 11, and then 3, this is part 3, and then here you've got part 2, part 1. Um, so for this we need 11, 3, 11, 2, and 11, 4, which I believe are all on here, yep they are, so... And we need to do that times two. So again, get yourself the uh, cutters. So we want this times two. So 11 twos here. And with the side cutters, put the flat side against the part. Give it a snip. These aren't the best cutters in the world. So you do get a little bit of a, a mark. But again, you can use your knife to clean that up. If you're still watching at this stage, thank you. Um, nice to have you here. Comment below. Um, where where are you watching from? What country are you in? Um, so we do tend to get quite a lot of overseas viewers, which is amazing, really. But uh, yeah, just hope you can understand what I'm saying. There we go. Let's do that on camera. 
So that's 11, 2, 1, 11, 3. Which are these tiny little bits? It is quite difficult cutting off the, the small ones. Ooh, and there's the first piece that I've dropped of, and there's the second. So I've just dropped both the pieces I need, uh, which is always fun and games with this stuff because they're so small. So I found one just here. Gives you an idea of the scale, really, doesn't it? Uh, where's the other one going to be? There it is. Do do do. do. <sighs> So we've got the two parts here. Again, you can clean these up with a knife, but to be honest, I might just not bother. Um, can't, can't be bothered. So then we need two of these. As you can tell, the, the detail on these models is really good. I used to have the Coaster Dynamics um, inverted roller coaster, the Scorpion which you've probably seen, which was really cool and fairly easy to build, like quite straightforward, nothing like this. Uh, but you don't get the level of detail anywhere near the level of detail you get with this Valor stuff. And I was a little bit put off Coaster Dynamics just by the customer service attitude that you get from their Facebook. Like I've never personally had a problem, but they're very defensive and don't seem to want to help their customers, which is a bit rubbish, really. Um, but yeah, if ever you want to laugh, go on Coaster Dynamics page and tell them that their product isn't very good and uh, get ready for the chaos to ensue. So we need to get back to this the glue in a minute. So you've got, can you see this? Yes, we can. Let's have a look. So here's the base of the outrigger, sits on the floor. This is where the tweezers come in. Now I always do a dry run first just to check. So this is literally how small it is. Look, look at that. Oh, it's not even going to focus. Oh well. So this is going to sit just on here, I hope. He says. I don't know whether it will. Given up on the tweezers. Yep, so that sits on there. And then you got to glue the outrigger on. So that was the practice run. Let's do it for real. Dab a little bit of glue. Again, only a tiny bit is needed. And I'm going to just use my fingers, I think, for this one because it kind of slots on quite nicely. Give that a push. There's that. Sorted. Boom. Just at this stage, I am going to give it a, a quick little clean up. Probably should have done it before, but it, it was looking a bit obvious to me. Yep, so there's one. I'll do the other one now whilst we're at it. Doodly -doo -doo -doo. quite nice to be doing a video like this because obviously I don't normally appear in the videos and just edit them. Um, but I've had people before saying, oh, do blog, do video blogs. And I don't know, it's not really me, but here is something I know I would enjoy. So now whilst the glue dries, I'm just going to prop this up. And you will think, whilst building this, putting this together, you'll think, oh, I need to get this absolutely bang on spot accurate, otherwise the outrigger is going to be wonky. And yeah, you're kind of right, but at the end of the day, it's a tiny little piece. You can you can flex it a bit. I've I snapped mine many times in the last one I built. 
just kept snapping off because you have to you end up putting pressure on it without realizing so don't worry too much because you'll get a chance to fix it again later so again just going to pop that like that there we go just leave that for a, a minute or two to dry um, and the stickers need to come back again unfortunately it's like when you build lego sets stickers hate them just look look rubbish don't they although these are quite cool stickers so we've got the actual Maurer stickers now so this model is based oh i haven't got any tweezers left this model is based on the power tower that traveled in germany uh, built by Maurer's owner so this is actually a Maurer logo and I believe the product is licensed by Maurer it says on the box it's definitely got the logo on the box which uh, I don't think they'd just put on unless they have permission well who knows so you basically just got to stick the logo on the end here again try and be careful which I've just not been as long as you don't push it down you can kind of slide it around a little bit There we go. There's one little little logo on the outrigger. So there we go, we've got our four outriggers, we've got our base, um, so we'll move on to the next step now which is underneath the camera, so just going to move that. So what we've covered so far is up to this stage, so we've got to turn it upside down basically and install the feet. Simple right? Turn it upside down, put it the same way as in the instruction manual. So you got to work out which one's which now. So two of them here, um, they are part G, and they go at the back. Ah, okay, so I was wrong. What I was saying just now is incorrect about them going at the front. These actually go at the back. So what you might find, well you will definitely find it's a very tight fit. And if it won't go on, what you might want to do is go back to the holes you carved out from the base and make them bigger. But it does need to be tight, so that does push in. If it wouldn't have, you can just make these holes a little bit bigger. Um, but so yeah, test them, glue them, get them in. If they don't fit, make them bigger. So that's what I'm going to do now. So this has taken so far about uh, just just over an hour, but obviously you can probably do it quicker, or you could do it a lot slower if you really want to put a lot of effort into it. Um, but there we go. Okay then. So once you've done the base piece, just put that to one side because you won't need it for a little bit. 
um, we're moving on to a page full of basically the motor mechanism. Um, this gets quite fiddly and it's really boring and if you get it wrong the model won't run at the end so it's worth taking a little bit of time on. So we're looking for sprue number nine, it's a yellow one and we want nine three times two. Pop that out. No, it's saying times two, so there must be another. Oh, no, there's not. That's not the right piece. So this smaller one is 9.3, but again, there should be two of those. Um, let's have a look. Yep. <laughs> so get your second sprue, another one here, like so. Pop them out. Now with these it is definitely worth cleaning them up because they need to run smoothly. So give them a bit of a trim. Like so, just clean the end up. I'll normally give it a bit of a file as well. A little hand file. So there's two of these. You can always come back to them later if you've not done quite right. So there's some other bits that you need for this, which are in a bag. So if we have a look over here, you'll see it's a 2T3 bag three. So it's always good to have a Chinese takeaway tub, empty all the bits into it. Um, what you'll notice is this here, OEL488, which looks like some kind of super glue or something, but do not glue. Um, it's actually a lube, so you get a little part of this grease. Um, I think that's what they mean. It might be something else, but that's what I used on the one before and it worked. So now I use this greasy stuff. I mean, OEL 488 probably isn't this, it's probably something else, but what I tend to do is just get a little bit on the tweezers and then oop, and then literally like push it in to where it needs to go, like so, so that's obviously too much, but We've got one. You pop that on. Check it moves freely, which it does, so that's fine. Um, you just repeat that four times, basically. So pop a bit in there, like so. Bear in mind that once you put it on, you can spread the oil just by twisting. So there's one complete. And do the same for the other one. Now supposedly you need to oil regularly once the model's made to keep it working but since I made my original one about a year ago I've never oiled it but then again it doesn't run very often it just sits as an ornament which looks very nice so there we go it's like a mini dumbbell Ooh, got two of them <laughs> apologies for the sniffling once again Man flu. So now we need piece nine one. You do get two of these. You only need one. So if you do cock up, 
you'll be all right. If you cock up twice, not good. Unless this is the second one you're building, like me. Then I've got another spare one in the other box from my old one. Now quite a lot of people who've had this model just keep it as a uh, static model and don't have it running. Um, and they say it's because that's the way they wanted it to be built, but they're lying. What they mean is they made a mistake and super glued one of the moving parts, probably the one we've just done, and their model doesn't work. So, haha. Here we go then, so here's a piece. Well, as you can see from the instruction, you basically need to pop these in place. And if I remember correctly, they do make a popping noise. Very difficult to get in without feeling like you're gonna break something. So I'm gonna use this poker. There's one. Now that's definitely the way to do it. Let's use something fairly precise. There we go, that's in. And once it's in, give it a bit of a, just check it, check it moves, which it does. The more you do that, the freer it becomes. Same again for the other side. Pop it in. There we go, that one's in as well. Give it a bit of a, there we go. Try to avoid pushing the middle down with your finger or your thumb, because it sort of bends them, which I think I did with my first attempt last year. So that's kind of much better. Again, just make sure everything's sanded down. Make sure everything does move because you want as little friction as possible to make the uh, ride run properly at the end of it. So we need part nine four, which is this one that I cut out earlier on. This is the one that you need to clean up nicely where have I put the knife there. so this one will potentially stop your model from running if you don't clean this up properly you may find you have to come back to this later on whilst building just to kind of shave a bit off that's what I had to do the first time. So get rid of any imperfections on this this piece. <laughs> I'm just gonna give it a bit of a fire whilst I'm here. So two of these kind of collars, bigger ones this time, and they will go into these two holes. Now these will be really tight to get in. Um, you'll think it's too tight. So I would recommend that you file these holes out a little bit because um, you do need them to go in tight. Otherwise you're gonna have too much friction um, on this pulley. Give this a, a file. It's probably the best way of doing it. Easiest way anyway. Let's shove it in. Give it a twist. in further now you can see the flush you really need to try and get it that flush use a file or whatever and you can test putting the pulley in should be able to just get it in there so as you can see there's enough room for it to rotate which is good so again I'm gonna put some oil in these bearings
okay. And I'm actually going to just dunk the end of this in. Don't know whether that's the best way of doing it, but there we go. So we need to pop this in like so. And then we get piece nine six, which is here. And you'll see if you look very closely, it's got a bit of a flat edge on the top. Now that should match up with a flat edge inside the pulley, which I've not looked at. So if you can find a flat edge, which is currently at the bottom, so I'll try and do that like so. Flat edge lined up. Let's see. See if I can line it up. It's difficult. There you go. You'll feel it go. You'll be able to push that in like so. And there we go. Simple, eh? Well, <laughs> whether or not that'll be good enough is yet to be seen. It does rotate. Things do tend to get stiffer as you go along, though. Who were? So from bag three, we need two screws. This is where we put the motor in now. So again, it does come with a motor, which is good. It doesn't come with a transformer to actually power it. But we'll get onto that at some point. So here's the motor it comes with. Um, essentially, you've got to put it in. And once you put it in, it'll slide. It slides to the right point. I don't think it matters which way, that way up it goes. Uh, well, it doesn't. Um, there's a piece to hold it in place just here. Now what I have just noticed obviously on this sprue we've got uh, nine pulleys. This one there's load missing. Uh they're probably in the box somewhere, so don't don't go too crazy looking for it. If you find something missing, they do break off in transit. So all this is going to be mounted under the platform, you'll never see it. So for the non-moving parts, you don't really have to clean them up, but you get extra brownie points if you do. So here's the two screws. I'm going to need some screwdrivers for this. Always handy to have. And we literally pop them in and glue, uh, not glue, don't glue. You'll notice these uh, screws are blunt on the end, which makes things interesting. They should just go in there. I think I need a bigger screwdriver. Let's try this. Now, the idea, I believe, is. that you don't over tighten because the motor still needs to be able to slide in and out if you push hard enough because um, there are stages later on it's a very torquey motor so you can't push it oh I tell a lie you can I didn't think you could but if you uh, slide the motor out later on you can kind of adjust the position of the tower so and if you do over tighten, you end up just boring a hole in the plastic and it's uh, traumatic for all involved. Just pop these away. It's got part nine, seven, and then from bag three, we have what looks to be some kind of like a piece of Lego Technic. It's not. It says do not glue. So I believe we'll just push it in. Let's have a look. 
and yeah, it does push in. It's very stiff. So this could be a job for the pliers again. If you've got something really stiff, give it a push. And there we go. Simple. Still recording there? Yeah, 25 minutes in. Cool. Um, and another do not glue, so from bag three. They do seem to group things into the bags that you need in the right order, which is nice for the most part. Now this piece, this kind of threaded screw as it were, at one end there's a space for a slight screwdriver, other end is pointy, so bear that in mind, you need to put the pointy end in first, so screw, just screw it in basically, pointy end first. Do, do, do. Get that in, and I think you just need to screw it a little bit for now. So we leave that for a second and we come on to bag three again, the uh, gear that drives the main pulley. Now this actually has to be super glued into here. So for this, the best thing to do is push the motor back just out of your way. And then you should be able to push it in just to test it. Yep, that's in. There we go. Um, and if you push that back in, there you go. Simple. So this is one of the things you need to do super glue for, and it does tell you in the manual using instant modeling cement, and they'll try and sell you one of their special ones. But there's no need, just use cheap super glue. Uh, be careful where it goes though. Because, as you know, super glue stops moving things from moving. So don't get it on any parts that are supposed to move. A little bit goes a long way. I can feel this going wrong. Go on, go. There we go. So that's in. Give it a push. Now, the temptation is to push this back in straight away, but remember you've got some super glue in this cog, so I'm just going to leave it to dry for a little bit. So whilst you're waiting for that to dry, and come back to the bit from the stage before, now this should kind of slide into the groove. Get it to the groove, I believe. And once it's in, you can give it a glue, but I need to clean it up first. to let it sit flat, so use your knife, get rid of any of that rubbish. You should hopefully find that it just kind of sits in place. And essentially what you end up doing is screwing this in, and as you screw that in, the pointy end stops this whole uh, axle from bending basically. Um, the instructions are saying something about a plexiglass container being needed for this stage, but I think they're talking rubbish because I don't think we need it. <laughs> Famous last words. So we come back to our normal modeling glue now. Pop a bit in this one. If you're watching this and you make phylum models, please feel free to give me some advice because I am by no means an expert. Once you've done that and you're giving it a bit of time to dry, you can push the motor back in. It should engage. There we go. Simple. There you go. You'll find you can't turn it. Um, don't worry about that. As long as it turns without the motor. So I'm going to leave the motor out for a sec just in case there's any glue that's not dry. and. Can leave this for now, I'll screw it in a little bit. So as you can see, as you screw it in, it just kind of makes contact with the center of this uh, gear to keep it from bending. So there we go. That is the motor assembly. 
in its basic form. So we can bring back in the base for the next stage, turn it upside down. And now it's basically time to install this. Fairly simple. I believe it slots on to these two here. There's two little holes. So it just pushes on, simple. Um, and th this is where I almost uh, made a mistake there. Try not to uh, rush ahead and glue this on. Because if you do and you have issues with it in the future, you're going to have problems. So what you want to do, pop it on and then screw it in place with the other two screws that, that we were using just now. Oop. Pop it in like so. There's one. Maybe a magnetic screwdriver would help, but uh, I don't have one. Get that in. And as soon as it's sitting flush, stop. So that should hold that in place. Simple. So there, there we have it, it's the underside of the platform with the mechanism in place. I'll leave the motor out like I said, but you will eventually push it back in. And that's it for that stage, which is a bit of a relief. Uh, the best way when you turn it the other way up to keep everything stable, just pop the cable through one of the outrigger holes. That way it's still stable when you're working on it. And so there we go. Uh, and that's all we've got time for for part one of HDR Build It Fala Power Tower. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please do let us know what you think in the comments below. And uh, here's a preview of what you can see next time when we construct the gondola of the Fala Power Tower. Thanks, guys. Have a thrilling week. They don't see